What's up, Power Appers? My name is Todd Beginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and the CTO at Canvas. My team and I are working on a bunch of Power App templates, as you may have seen in my other videos for Microsoft. And the latest one that is about to go live is called Get On Board. When Get On Board does hit the template section for Power Apps, you can get it by going to web.powerapps.com, just like I've done here. Then you'll scroll down to the bottom and you'll click the See More, which now says See Less because I already clicked it. And then you're going to see the Get On Board app down here in the list. Once you see it in the list, you can click it and it will automatically install it in your Power Apps environment. And then you can run it and use it in your organization. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the functionality in the app, and I'm also going to show you the administrative things you can do to set it up in your organization. After the Power App template has been installed in your Power Apps environment, it's going to pop up in the editor just like this. You'll see it on the welcome screen here. What you need to do as an admin is you need to go to the Add App Admin screen here and run the app. When you add someone as an app admin, it's going to light up additional functionality for them in the app, which I will demonstrate to you. That functionality is going to allow those app admins to set up content and configure this application. To set up the app admins, what you do is come to this add, admins, add app admin screen, hit the play button, and then type in the admins you would like to have for the application. Here, I'm just going to select myself and click Add Admin User. Once that is done, I'll get a notification my admin user has been added, and then I do not need to work with the app anymore in the Power App Editor. You can see here that I have been added as an app admin, so now I can really do anything I need just by running the app outside of the editor. So now that I have added myself as an app admin, I'm going to walk you through the application and show you the different things it's doing and where its data comes from. So I'm going to flip over to another screen where I'm already loading the app. The first thing you're going to see is that you get prompted to authorize the Office 365 Users Connector. And so I will click Allow for that to happen. But before I do that, I would like to open up my email and show you my tasks here in Outlook. Notice I only have one folder called the to-do list here. When we run the app, we are going to see three additional folders it creates to manage the tasks and different things inside of the app itself. So I'll come back to the app, allow the connector, and now Get On Board app is going to get started for the very first time in my environment. Now that the app is loaded, I can go back and show you the difference of what it built inside of Outlook. Here you can see three new folders that were created. One called Get On Board Tips. That'll never have any tasks on it. It's actually used to control if a tooltip is displayed or not in the application the first time you go to the next page in the app I'm about to show you. The other thing that we have is the My Profile. The My Profile is a task folder that will hold the profile tasks that you have to complete in the app, as well as the To-Do List, which will uh, hold different tasks that you have to do in the To-Do List for the app. Coming back to the app itself, I'll now click on the Get Started button, and here's the tooltip I was talking about. You can see this in the top. It tells you what's happening. Your onboarding to-do list has been automatically added to your tasks in Outlook. Look for them here. So here you can see the ones that I just showed you and walked you through what they do. Again, this particular Get On Board Tips folder controls if you see that or not. If I run the app again and this folder already exists, then that tooltip will not be displayed. We can also look at the My Profile and see there are three tasks for me to complete. Profile Complete, About Me Email Complete, and Photo Complete. The app uses these tasks to track if you've done things inside of the app, which I'll show you in just a bit. 
We also have the Get On Board to-do list. This to-do list is configurable by an app admin, and I will show you where an app admin can configure this. These are just out-of-the-box tasks that we gave that you may have in this type of Get On Board app itself in your organization. So when we loaded this screen, that to-do list got synced with Outlook as we saw, and here are those tasks. And we also have one task for the profile that correlates to each one of these screens here. Notice my profile completeness as well as my progress on the tasks is set to 0% because none of them have been closed at this point in time. I can come up here and close this tooltip as well and then start showing you the rest of the application. All right, so before I start digging into actually how does the app work, let's talk a little bit more about the admin functionality and the data sources that the app has. When someone is added as an admin user, as you saw me do in the early part of the video, these edit buttons appear throughout the application. The edit buttons allow the admin user to edit the content that all users of the application see here when they log in. So in the to-do list, by editing these tasks, we are controlling which tasks get automatically created the first time someone runs this app and put into Outlook. If an admin user adds additional tasks after the first time the user's already run the app, then they will also be synced with Outlook and shown here in this list. The admin user can also control content on the team page such as the three links you see by default here when they click Edit Team Header. None of the other information on this screen uh, will be controlled, though, uh, by the admin. That's just all dynamic information coming from Office 365. On the company page, the admin can also control the three links in the top here, the intro, the FAQs, the leadership section, as well as the context section right there too. So where is the data actually coming from? Well, that's a good question that we should answer right off the bat. When the Get On Board app gets installed, it also will ask you if, can, for a location where you wish to push the Excel file that is going to hold all of the data. When I went to the Add Admin page and I added my user account, it added it to this data table here on the administrators page. The tasks that the application grabbed by default came out of this right here and then were synced to Outlook. Here you can see the names of those tasks, exactly how they appeared in Outlook and in the app itself. The other tabs throughout the app are also areas whenever you click edit as an admin user that you're just adding data to these places in the app. So as you look through, you can see lots of different metadata here about the different places in the app and where we store that information. You could also put this information inside of the common data source service, or you can put it inside a SQL server or something else. But in this case, we choose to use Excel because it's very easy for any level of Power Apps license uh, to use that information. You can also edit this file directly, or you can edit it directly within the Power App. So let's take a look at actually editing that. If I come back, let's just stick on this page actually. If I would like to enter uh, or edit some of this content. Maybe I would like a new button here at the top. I just hit edit company header button there. I can change the name of the company. It's like this to my own for instance. And I could change this to my blog. And now I have updated that link, how it looks and where it goes to in the app, and I can save it. When we come back out of this page, we will see in the header the new link that appears for us. Also, if we go to Excel and we opened up the company header tab, we would see that information has also changed uh, behind the scenes in the Excel file as well. 
Therefore, any user who runs this app is now going to see this change because the Excel file is the common place where we're storing all that information. So now here we have my blog link, and if I click that, it will open up a new browser window and take me to my blog. So as you can see, there are many different places in this app where you're able to store that information. So really, when you're setting up this app for your organization, what you're going to want to do is run this app as an admin user and then edit all the things in here to make it applicable to your organization and then grant access to all the users in your organization as well. So let's take a little tour of the different pieces of the application so you can see how they work. So in an onboarding app, the first thing we want to do is have somebody set their company photo. So here, mine's already set, but you can select one from a gallery on your computer, and when you do so, then that image will appear. When you hit Save Changes, it will sync it up and make it your Office 365 profile picture. If I hit Save Changes here, and I come back, this is just a debugging message I have up top right now. You can see that my profile completeness is at 33% now. And if I come back over to Outlook and I look at that profile task, you can see it has been marked as complete. So that's how we stay in sync with Outlook and everybody tracks their own tasks in their own Outlook. You can also write an About Me email. And then when you uh, select a picture of yourself and you submit it, it will automatically go to whoever your manager is set to, an Active Directory, and then your manager can send that out to your team. In addition to that, you can also build up your own employee profile. Here you can put in your birth date, about you, your interests, your schools, your skills, and all that information is then synced as well to your Office 365 user profile. One thing to note is this page does not pull your current information from Office 365. It's designed just to be used the very first time that you're joining an organization and getting on board. So we're assuming this information would be blank at that point. We can also then go complete our to-do list tasks. So I can come to this one here, fill out parking form, if I click Get Started, it will take me to whatever link is associated with this action. And then I can go get that form, for example, fill it out, come back here, mark it as complete. Again, if I come back to Outlook now and look at the to-do list, we can see this one has been marked as complete as well. You can also complete them directly from Outlook. And the next time you open the Power App, then you'll see they're completed here as well. Quick Resources is just a place for you to make links to quick resources in your company that people would need to get to. Uh, if you edit these things, you can pick from the resource on the right, pick which URL it goes to, save it, delete it. Uh, you're indicating over here by the lack of the pencil which one you're currently working with, so you can just change all those resources very quickly. Over on the company page, as I talked about before, we have all of this different information about how to edit the intro, different FAQs, leadership, contacts, company header, and you can change those links as well. The team page shows you all sorts of information about your team, your manager, your peers, and your direct reports. This page has some cool functionality in it. For example, it'll show me who I work closely with, and I can pick the see more here or see less to look at different people that I work with a lot. I can also select different users in my organization and learn about them and see their information on the right side as well. So here's Melody's information as well. And you can just go up and down the list and pick whoever you like. So that's a little bit of a tour of the Git Onboard Tasks application. I hope you find it helpful and shoot me an email if you have any questions about it. Thanks a lot.